Ladies and gentlemen, freaks and geeks, legendary peeps, Surya Namaskara, Namaste. I'm going to broach one of the most controversial, divisive topics in the world. More divisive than gay rights, more divisive than veganism, than feminism, than whether or not Donald Trump should be the next president of the United States. More divisive than pretty much anything I would say and that is the topic of abortion now being a libertarian being a fan of the founding fathers and respecting the idea that we are all endowed with inalienable rights obviously I champion the concept of natural law the concept that we have a right to do anything that we want. I believe in maximum freedom, provided we are not harming anyone in the process. And I don't even like using the word believe. There are many things that we want in this world. However, when it comes to right and wrong, there are many things that we don't have the right to do. There are many things I want. I want to be the king of the world. I would like to be able to go into anyone's house and smack anyone in the face if they disagreed with me. Actually, I don't really want that, but you get the point. There are many things that I would like to do, but I don't do because I understand that it's not my right. It's not my right, not because I have come up with some concept of right and wrong, but because I understand that there are certain things that harm others, that violate their freedoms, their sovereignty. And as a result, I don't do those things. It's the basic concept of natural law. It is the concept that is ingrained within the Declaration of Independence, within the Bill of Rights. It is the concept that so many of the brilliant men in history have championed, not only the Founding Fathers of the United States, but all the great philosophers in history. Plato, Marcus Aurelius, Manly P. Hall, all of these people have an understanding of principles of natural law rights because they understand that this is the fabric of the cosmos, of the universe, of right and wrong, karma, the golden rule. Most religious, atheistic, any organization that respects truth and liberty expresses these concepts to some extent. In regards to the abortion issue, without a doubt, once again, as an animal rights activist, as a human rights activist, as someone that believes in liberty, it is without a doubt the right of a woman to have some aridity over her own body, over, over her own reproductive system. That is unassailably her right. However, as a fetus cannot survive independently from the mother, you can't impose its freedom without violating the freedoms of the mother. This is a very important point. This is why the abortion issue is so different to many other issues. It would seem like a very simple case. You're killing a fetus. You're killing a sentient being. You don't have the right to do that. End of story. But because that fetus cannot survive independently without the mother, without you. I am restricting your freedom, your, over, your own sovereignty over your body if I am forcing you not to have an abortion. That's why this issue is so fundamentally, ridiculously tricky. And I know a lot of people maintain that they're basically two abortionists. The abortionists that fundamentally believe it is wrong. However, maintain that having said that, it is the right of a woman to do what they want to do with their body. And the fundamentalists that believe it is wrong and believe they have a right to restrict the rights of an individual and force them not to do as they would with their body. I'm speaking about this purely from the perspective of rights, of understanding of freedoms. From this perspective, it is actually very clear. It's difficult because you're saying yourself it is simply wrong to kill. That's all there is to it. 
but you have to apply a bit more understanding of the violations. I cannot expect you to abide by something if by me asking you to do that, you are relinquishing your right to life. This is the one aspect of rights of natural law that is very important. It would be wrong for me to ask you to do something that is going to kill you. It's just an understanding of, of survival. You may say it's wrong, but here is a beautiful situation that illustrates this. This abortion scenario. And makes it a bit more palpable, tangible to men and women. If you had been abducted by aliens, I don't know if you believe in aliens, but let's say you had been abducted by an alien race. They took you up in their flying saucer, experimented on you, and implanted you with some kind of a fetus, some kind of weird parasite that was living in you. Now, they finally decided to drop you down to planet Earth and you discovered this parasite growing within your body. You have no idea what it is, whether or not it's going to kill you. And bottom line is you simply don't want this thing within your body. Your body, which you have complete and utter control of, at least you should if you believe in sovereignty over your own body. If you don't have sovereignty over your own body, then you do not have sovereignty at all. You don't believe in freedom or you don't have freedom if you don't have freedom of your own body. I want to reiterate this point. Now, if the government, if the people of your country, of your planet, after you had told them that you had been implanted with this fetus, this alien parasite that was living within you, that was restricting your freedom, that had been implanted there by force, not willingly, but they were telling you that you had to see that baby, that fetus, that parasite, to birth, how would you feel knowing that this thing may very well kill you, that this thing has been imposed within your body and now someone is forcing you to see it to fruition even though you have the ability to control your body and not have that thing come into fruition. This is why the situation of abortion is so tricky. Ultimately, I believe that you have control over your own body. If there was something growing inside of you, whether or not that was a parasite, whether or not that was a bacteria, whether or not that was something that had been implanted within you, whatever that might be, you have a right to decide whether or not you want to continue having that thing grow within your body because you have control over your own body. If someone came into your house and was doing something in your house like performing some kind of weird operation on their body, a life and death operation on their body within your house, you'll have to bear with me, I'm extemporaneously coming up with this hypothetical. And you came into your house and you saw them performing this weird operation on themselves, you still have the right to kick them out of your house, your house, even though that operation is a life and death scenario. If that operation, let's say, to, uh, to make this a bit more realistic or appropriate for this, uh, this analogy, if that operation was endangering your entire house, and your life, you have the right to kick that person out of your house. It is your right to do that. It may not be considered a very nice thing to do, it may be considered a harsh thing to do, but if you believe in freedoms, ultimately, you have to respect the rights of people. At least this is how I feel about the scenario. That's why in regards to the abortion issue, this is fundamentally what it comes down to. Of course, you can play the utilitarian arguments. You can, you can make the argument that if we prevent abortions or if we allow abortion, it's going to lead to A, B, and C. But that is immaterial to the fundamental issue at hand, which is that 
It is the rights of the individual to have sovereignty over their own body. And you cannot ask someone to restrict their own freedoms, even if it's going to lead to the death of something within their body. This is fundamentally what it comes down to for me. And whereas I can understand that a lot of people see this differently, they look at it fundamentally that killing is wrong, period. I can understand that, but you're wrong. And I try to speak as diplomatically as I can, but you need to understand that there are certain situations where it is not true violence. It is not an infringement of someone's rights. It is acceptable to kill in self-defense. If someone is threatening your own life, if someone is about to kill you, it is actually, I would say, wrong for you not to protect yourself. If someone is trying to kill your friend and you choose not to do what is necessary in order to thwart that action, it is not just a matter of saying that, fair enough, it's your right to choose not to thwart that action, thwart someone trying to violate the rights of your friend, but it is actually wrong for you not to intervene. It is wrong for you not to do what is necessary in order to prevent someone from killing your friend or yourself. This is where it becomes tricky. It is called the self-defense principle. Most people tend to understand the feminine principle, the principle of nonviolence. That's the hallmark of most libertarians, most activists, most hippies, most beautiful people. And I respect that more than I respect anything. One of my best friends, my best friend, would make this argument all the time. He would talk about how he would never kill anyone in any situation because he believes that if he was to take on this attitude of defending himself, of trying to kill someone that was trying to kill him, it's only going to lead to more harm. And when you have that mindset, it brings about these situations. He had this metaphysical understanding that if you think about using these weapons for self-defense, like carrying a gun or being willing to use self-defense tactics in order to thwart violence, you're only going to bring about these situations to you, this law of attraction mentality. Therefore, he would have a mentality that he would never, even in the most extreme situation, defend himself or defend others because that kind of thinking would only lead to bringing that which he's trying to avoid to him. And whereas I can respect that to some extent, I think it's beautiful for someone to respect life so much that they are not willing to end life in any situation. And I think it's far more beautiful than someone that is willing to do a wrong in order to bring about good. However, they're both wrong in that you have to have an understanding of the masculine principle, the principle of self-defense. The idea that it is your inalienable right to to defend yourself and to defend others if they are having their rights violated. If someone is trying to kill you or if someone is trying to kill a friend or if your life is in jeopardy, you have a right to defend yourself. And it is a very difficult thing for people to assimilate the idea of not only the feminine principle but the masculine principle, the principle of self-defense which is just as important as the principle of nonviolence. They both go hand in hand. You cannot have the yin without the yang. You cannot have the will to defend yourself without the will to respect people's rights. But you get what I'm saying. Ultimately, you need to have an, an appreciation for both nonviolence and self-defense. And this is why the abortion issue is so incredibly difficult. People, a lot of the times, only want to buy into the nonviolence principle. But they don't have an understanding of the self-defense principle. The yin and the yang. The left brain and the right brain. The masculine and the feminine. And look, I'm familiar with many of the arguments in regards to abortion, in regards to how people make the argument that we need to protect women. <laughs> I've heard the argument by a lot of fundamentalist Christians that a lot of these women don't know what they're doing. 
don't don't know don't fully understand the repercussions of their actions how they're going to feel about aborting their child therefore we need to force them not to do it a lot of them don't understand the consequences of using contraceptions for instance i heard a lady make the argument that a lot of these contraceptives have been classed as a class one carcinogen by the World Health Organization and because women are not aware of this they need to be prevented from using these substances here's the thing people have to take accountability for their own actions people have a right to destroy themselves if they want to where is I would like to advise people give people the information so they can make informed decisions I cannot prevent someone and this has to do with an understanding of rights, an understanding of natural law. I cannot prevent someone, force someone not to harm themselves because it is in their best interest. If we start applying that mentality that because you are not intelligent enough to make decisions for yourself, I am going to force you not to do things, it becomes dangerous. And this is what the government tries to do. They try to pass legislation to protect people because they don't know any better. This is why we have ridiculous draconian drug laws preventing people from using substances because the government believes that these substances are dangerous. This is why we have certain age of consent laws where most women once they are at the age of 15, 16 or even earlier have an understanding of the consequences of their actions and therefore should be willing to undergo the consequences of their actions but the state the government says because you don't know better we're going to protect you and therefore we're going to put laws where even if you consentingly have sex with someone in order to protect you we're going to incriminate someone that has sex with you even if you've misled them if you've lied about your age you entice them in order to protect you the person that has done something unethical we're gonna make it illegal these are the kind of tactics the government does because ultimately it's about trying to bring about a better state it's all for the common good it always comes down to the common good versus the inalienable rights that is pretty much what all political issues lie in most of the major political issues they lie in whether or not we are trying to bring about good or whether or not we are trying to respect the rights of people. At least these are the important issues. All the important issues deal with these two topics. That's why we have the right and the left. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how I feel on the topic of abortion. I know it is a very divisive topic and a lot of you will disagree with me. I think a lot of the people that listen to my channel tend to be either fundamentalists deontological people and I respect that I respect principles more than I respect anything I respect someone that is willing to die for something that they know is right and wrong but it is important that we have right principles when you have right principles correct principles there is no need to be thinking about ends justifies the means because ultimately the right principles will enable the greatest amount of good for the greatest amount of people if we all respect each other if we all apply the golden rule we don't do things that harm each other that without a doubt brings them about the most amount of good however when we have wrong principles like it's wrong for you to have marijuana no matter what that's my principle and that's all there is to it that's what brings about protest. That's what brings about violence. As JFK once said, I'm going to paraphrase here, but he said that if you make peaceful violence or peaceful protesting impossible, you make violent revolution inevitable or something to that extent. And that is very true. When there is not freedom, when there is not the respect for the rule of law, the respect for the inalienable rights of citizens, that is when you ensure that people that have an understanding of these things will go about doing what is necessary in order to bring about justice. This is why we had the 
the civil war in the United States. This is why so many revolutions have taken place, whether it was the revolution of Spartacus, whether it was the abolitionist revolution dealing with the black slaves, whether it is the feminist revolution, you get the idea. People innately have an understanding, not everyone, but most people have an understanding, I would say, of what is right, what is just, when their rights are being violated. And when they are, it is only a matter of time before they take it upon themselves to rectify the injustice. The arc of the moral universe is long, but it always bends towards justice. And throughout time, due to the centropic force of the universe, and when I say that, the force of matriculating to higher levels of justice, of good, of morality, people, all sentient beings, all things that are aspects of this universe will move towards wanting to make things better. This is an idea, you can take it or leave it, but I believe this within my heart, that ultimately we all driven towards wanting to make, at least, at least some of us, to make the world more just, more moral. Whereas this may strain, this may become distorted at times in history, and we definitely see lapses, fundamentally, we are growing towards more equality and more justice. I have to believe that. It is something that I feel as if I have to believe that ultimately within us we are driven towards growth. That is the centropic force of the universe. And because of this, it is only a matter of time before resistance to injustice becomes inevitable. And when people try to enact these draconian measures on the state, enlightened minds will always stand up for this. This is what I love about so many of the figures in history, people like Benjamin Franklin and Thomas Jefferson that had this innate understanding of rights, natural law, this blueprint, this logos that is inherent within these people that truly try to see things rightly. People like the Prophet Muhammad, who in his time, he believed in a lot of the ideas of his time, but he believed that he was seeing things just a little bit more clearly. Therefore, took it upon himself to stand up against the certitudes of his people and create a system that was more just, was more lawful. And to, very, to, to some extent, without a doubt, if you have a look at the, uh, the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad, many of the ideas inherent within his ideology are very, very sound, and they were far more just than the prevailing standards of the time. And the one thing that I admire the most about people like this is they're willing to stand up and do what is right because they know it to be right. They're working from a place of agape. They are working from a place of satyagraha. They are working from a place of ahimsa. They are working from a place of love. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave this here. I thought I would make a video because I have a big mouth. And I like talking. And I invite you, if you're still listening to this, not to unsubscribe, but to consider my words. And if they don't resonate with you, by all means, follow your heart. That is the most important thing. Think with your heart. Feel with your head. Trust your innate intelligence. Also trust your reason and logic, but as the Buddha says, if something does not resonate with your own heart, with your own mind, don't buy it. Throw it away. Got nothing in love for you all. Nothing but love. Peace out. Keep it real. Don't drive and text. Until next time, keep making those ethical gains. Boom, shaka, laka. Life's is to feel joy Metaphysical, lyrical, said enough for truth The only one to make change is walking in your shoes Be the example, don't complain about the news Making music and serving the world with the loo Now you can be the same, or you can be the change Find strength from inside, break through the chains No one to blame, nothing to prove You create your reality, it's up to you Be the change
Yes, I. This song is called Be the Change.